Alexa, fire the laser. Laser on. Alexa, laser off. Skynet approves of you arming your smart speaker, Sam. Hi, I'm Sam Barles. You're in my basement. And I want to tell you a little bit about this project that I put together during quarantine. As you can probably guess, at the heart of the laser is a laser tube. This is a 60 watt CO2 laser. This is the same kind of tube that you would find in most uh, laser cutters that you can buy commercially. In fact, the commercial success of laser cutters is at the core of why I'm able to build this thing for so little money. And for that, I thank China. I love China. China all the time. The way it works is very simple. Essentially, there is a 98% uh, transmittance mirror in this end, which means that most of the light bounces back, but not all of it does. There's a gold mirror at the other end. Everything is evacuated and then backfilled with a mixture of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Power is applied to the electrodes, the high voltage, about 25,000 volts from this power supply, excites the gas and the gas lases. What this is, is it is a way of converting electricity into a 60 watt laser beam. And 60 watts is really not a lot of power. This light behind me puts out about 60 watts. And of course, nothing in this room is catching on fire. So what is it that makes a 60 watt laser so powerful? So what are lasers? The word laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. And this might sound a little complicated, but it's actually a simple concept. Inside the laser, there are two mirrors in a gas tube, which we can draw here. There's a gas in this particular case, a mixture of carbon dioxide and nitrogen and a high voltage power supply. For this particular laser, a tube of this size, it's 25,000 volts. The gas is excited by the high voltage, which causes it to become ionized and start producing light. And as the light bounces back and forth between these mirrors, it starts to become coherent, which is to say all of the light is moving in the same direction. One of the mirrors is 100% reflective, the other one 98 or 99%. So from the mirror that is not completely reflective, we get a light beam a coherent light beam. And what makes it so useful is the fact that the light is very concentrated. And to understand what that means, imagine for a moment one square meter in the sun. The amount of power is a kilowatt. If you have a solar panel, that's about what it's collecting minus all of the efficiency losses. The light from this laser is only a two millimeter spot. Now, the laser is 60 watts, but if we divide 60 watts, by the area of a two millimeter dot, we get 20 million watts per square meter. In other words, we have 2000 times more power density than the sun on earth. And it's the power density that makes it possible to melt and weld and cut things. And when we focus it, we get power densities that are even higher. Gas lasers such as this one are actually very inefficient devices. In fact, the CO2 laser is by far the most efficient gas laser known, and it's only 10% efficient. What that means is when this laser is running, it creates a lot of excess heat. And dealing with that heat is one of the biggest challenges in laser design. For this particular laser build, I use a commercially available computer cooling system, and it actually works quite well. The system is made up of, made up of two parts. There is a water pump in front with a water reservoir, and then in the back, there is a radiator with dual cooling fans. The water pump circulates coolant very quickly around the tube and the heat is rejected by this radiator through which the fans are blowing air. This laser is only about 10% efficient. So what that means is we're rejecting more than 500 watts of heat here. I found that I can run it for about six or seven minutes in normal ambient conditions before it gets too hot. Alexa. Fire the laser. Laser on. You can hear the cooling come on. The power supply is on. 
but I don't have the laser powered up just yet. I have the ability to pulse it or turn it on continuously. One thing that's interesting about CO2 lasers is it's almost a pure heat beam. It's very deep in the infrared. The very little bit of light that you can see here is not the laser itself. It's just the gas that's ionized. Alexa, laser off. Skynet approves of you arming your smart speaker, Sam. That's a great line. Just came up with that too. One of the things that makes lasers so useful and so interesting is the fact that the laser beam is very small and that means we're concentrating a lot of power in a very small place. But with a lens, we can focus it down into an even smaller spot and we can get even higher power densities. The challenge with carbon dioxide lasers is that the beam is deep infrared, which means it's absorbed by all types of glass. To focus an infrared laser, we need a very special material. This lens is a crystal called gallium arsenide, and it works quite well. Alexa, fire the laser. Laser on. Without the lens, the power density is enough to burn wood, but really not in any sort of impressive way. But with the lens in place, now we have much more power density. And you can see the difference in the size of the burn. Of course, the burn with the lens is a lot smaller. It's probably just... There it is.